I thought I'd wear something like kind of fashionable for this video rather than just a sweatshirt like I normally would, but I still got my bunny socks. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, personal style. Big topic of conversation recently. I know I'm a little bit late to the trend. Fashionably late, one might say. <laughs> so, personal style has been a big topic of debate over on the internet recently, especially with how much the trend cycle has sped up and the massive pop-ups of micro-trends here and there and everywhere. Like, you can't avoid them. I'm like swatting away micro-trends like flies. This video actually has the perfect sponsor, which is Karma, a free app and Chrome extension, which ensures you'll never miss a price drop or a coupon code. It'll be linked in the description below. And I'll tell you guys a little bit more about how I use Karma to shop more mindfully later on in the video. Now, I know these personal style videos tend to be quite broad, but I also wanted to include elements that might actually be helpful to you guys. So I asked over on my Instagram, go follow me, why you feel like you can't put outfits together in the morning. The most common responses were you have too many clothes you don't like or don't fit your style that you're kind of going for, that you're afraid people will judge you for your outfits, that clothes don't look right on your body type, and finally you feel like you have a lot of clothes but none of it goes together, i.e. too many statement pieces, not enough basics, things like that. The fact that a lot of you said you have a lot of statement pieces that don't really go together I think just speaks to the whole mindless shopping mentality that a lot of us have at the moment. Karma has been such a help for me in being more mindful with my shopping and also let me save a little bit of money and not just from those irresponsible purchases. One trendy item I had been eyeing up for a while was this top from Expired Girl. I put it in my Karma wish list. I sat on it for a couple weeks and realized, hey, I still really want this item. And now I own it. It literally came in the post the other day and I love it. Using the link in my description, you can download and add the Karma Chrome extension like I'm showing you here. Once on the website, you are able to shop and save your favorite brands or get notified about any relevant sales or deals that are on. A feature I I love is that you're able to save items to lists, which is great when deciding which piece would fit best in your wardrobe. On desktop, Karma can scan the web for coupon codes and automatically apply them at checkout, and they even offer a cashback feature that gives back to you and a good cause. So check out the link in my description to download Karma and start shopping a little bit more mindfully. Before I get into answering all the things that you guys sent, I thought I'd bring you on my personal style journey myself because boy oh boy was it a rocky road to get here. I very much used to be someone who was very influenced by trends. I mean, ever since that kind of pastel kawaii grunge Tumblr thing in like 2016, that's when I started following trends. Like I distinctly remember living for like pastels and fishnets back in the day. Yeah, and then I went very art ho you guys remember that in 2017? A lot of denim, a lot of dungarees, a lot of yellow, a lot of vintage inspired graphic tees. They want actual vintage. Stripey socks, ukuleles. Then I went a lot more kind of pastel and very kind of soft girl because I did follow the trends, which I'm like kind of embarrassed about. And then I started shopping secondhand. I moved away from fast fashion almost entirely and have now started to create what I would consider my personal style. Don't get me wrong. I still love love a good trend but I've learned not to hop on specific micro trend pieces because I know I will just hate them in a few months. Examples later in the video. <laughs> I really hope that you enjoyed those embarrassing pictures of my past outfits. Who didn't have an awkward face? I feel like kids nowadays are skipping their awkward face and it's not fair. When I was 15 I didn't know how to dress myself and now we've got like 15 year olds dressing better than I do now. Have your awkward phase. It's a learning curve. <laughs> So step one to finding your style, I know they say it's in every single video, but it is to find inspiration. If you're lucky, you may already have some things in your wardrobe that you do love and wear often. So take elements of that piece of clothing that you like and make a little mental note. So that might be jumpers. You might really like knitted textures at the moment. You might really like a darker wash denim. You might really like platform shoes. You might really hate platform shoes. And if you hate platform shoes, what is wrong with you? They are amazing. So make little mental notes of things that you actually like wearing at the moment and just kind of set them aside for later. We're going to put a pin in it whilst we look for inspiration. I don't know why I'm getting so hyper. It's probably all the caffeine. She says while drinking more caffeine. I know they say this in every single personal style video, but guys, Pinterest, Instagram, they're going to be your best friends. I personally like using Pinterest and to avoid the whole kind of, is it a fit or is she just skinny body envy type mentality? I actually just pin singular 
clothing items. I know that might sound a bit weird, but I have a board on Pinterest called clothes where I just pin funky items of clothing that I like. These are more statement pieces. These aren't the basics, but statement pieces is kind of what makes your wardrobe your wardrobe. You know what I mean? And then I also have a board for outfit inspiration. When you're looking for inspiration, just keep in mind your body type. As I said before, a lot of you guys said you don't really know how to dress for your body type or you don't feel like clothes look good on your body. For me, I'm five foot two. My legs are short as hell. I know that low waisted or cropped things is going to make my legs look even shorter than they already do. So to kind of rebalance my proportions, I wear a lot of platform shoes. I have pretty much exclusively platform shoes to kind of help my vertically challengedness. I think having a few style icons that have a really similar body type to you is really useful because you can kind of see what works for them and then what also can translate into your own wardrobe. So once you have this massive just splurge of cool outfits and clothes, you're gonna want to go through it again and pick out all the key elements that you see repeated a lot so in my wardrobe it's knitwear I love a bit of funky knitwear it's very much dark neutral tones and fun graphic prints that are a bit like grungy even though my personality is nothing like that but we move. Do you gravitate towards more bright colours? Do you like more traditional prints like plaid or gingham? Do you like a more boyish masculine silhouette or do you prefer feminine cuts? I'd pick about five keywords elements to kind of classify your main bulk of your wardrobe because of course you can have little pieces here and there which you might like which might not fall into this big category but as I said starting off with a good foundation and a good knowledge of what you do like is going to help you when shopping for clothes in the future. I think mine is probably probably texture, neutral, platform, 90s, vintage, and oversized. I think using that system is just great when deciding what you actually wear. And then compare those five words to the elements in the clothes that you wear a lot already. You see how we're building? You see how we're making? Now we have the basic format of what we want our wardrobe to be. We're gonna go back to basics. Basics are the foundation of a good wardrobe. You know, you can't have a good fancy nice house without a good foundation because it's not it's not gonna be pretty however i'm a firm believer that basics look different for everyone basics are your personal items that you wear a lot and you can style with anything it's not gonna be the same pair of straight leg jeans and white t-shirt it may be wide leg jeans for you it may be skinny jeans for me personally it is carpenter jeans i have this pair of bdg carpenter jeans that i wear at least three times a week they're my basic people might not see that as a basic item but that's that's my basic layering items such as turtlenecks vests or gilets shirts i feel like basics come under two color schemes though i believe if you're more drawn to darker or lighter basics it really kind of just depends on your own wardrobes but yeah basics will look different for everyone so i think having a good knowledge and a good foundation of your basics will help you build upon your wardrobe this next part is the most important in creating a cohesive wardrobe and that is color schemes color schemes are so underrated when it comes to wardrobes as i feel like a lot of people find them really limiting but realistically you will gravitate towards a color scheme even if you have a lot of clothes that are a lot of different colours, you will still prefer a group of colours over another. So in my wardrobe, personally, I would describe my colour scheme as this. This is pretty much my wardrobe's colour scheme. It is the colours I gravitate most towards and I especially really keep these colours in mind when I'm thrifting. If it's a colour that isn't going to suit my skin tone or isn't going to go with a lot of things in my wardrobe, I'm just not going to get it because I won't be able to pair it with anything and every time I see it in my wardrobe, I will look sad. Finding a colour scheme that works for you and works for your wardrobe is going to be so useful when shopping because you'll know that this piece will just seamlessly fit into your wardrobe beautifully and you won't have have to buy a new pair of jeans and a new pair of shoes in order to make this one piece fit. To trend or not to trend? That is the question. I've spoken about this before, but this state of the trend cycle right now is just nuts. Dupe culture and micro trends has also just fed into this cycle. Like there was this TikTok of someone finding a house of sunny dupe in a charity shop like two weeks after it was trendy. What is the state 
of that. There is three types of clothing items. There is a micro trend, which basically becomes untrendy as fast as it became trendy. There are trends, like the whole kind of Y2K we've seen recently. And then there is timeless, which are just the more classic items. I can't sit here and preach, don't shop micro trends, find your own style. I've brought micro trends before. Now I'm embarrassed to say this. I brought the Cider Heartwave sweater when it was really, really popular, thinking that I would wear this all the time and it was so cool and I just like loved everything about it when no I didn't I'd just been overexposed to it so much to the point where I thought it was cool I probably wore it about two or three times and then I sold it now using the Cider Heartwave sweater as a kind of example I'm going to show you how you can decide if these trendy pieces actually belong in your wardrobe or if you just seen it too many times so let's start off with what I did like about the sweater I love that it was like a funky knit sweater I love funky knit sweater I have loads. The fact that it was more boxy. However, onto the cons, it was pink. I didn't have anything pink. I didn't have anything to go with it. I didn't actually like the cut of the neck. I couldn't really layer well with it. It just was an easy pairing with anything in my wardrobe and I just didn't feel that comfortable wearing it. It was almost embarrassing to wear it out. It was like, oh god, everyone's seen this jumper and now I'm wearing it out. I don't understand that mentality either, but that is just what I was thinking at the time. I was like too embarrassed to wear this jumper so i got this really similar jumper which is this little teddy bear jumper i wear it all the time because the color scheme goes better in my wardrobe it's still got that funky pattern it's still got that boxy oversized fit and i've worn that probably about 10 times more than i did the heart sweater so this is why you don't buy micro trends. I think the fact that I ended up going through these items so quickly just speaks to how much we don't actually like these clothing items. Something that I've thrifted either from Depop or charity shop, I value 10 times more than I ever would something that I shop fast fashion. Now let's talk about your wardrobe's cool big sister, which is gonna be accessories. Accessories have the power to completely change an outfit. I also categorize outerwear like coats and gilets and shoes as accessories. Anything that can change the whole outfit I class as an accessory. I think accessories are a very kind of affordable way to experiment with these different trendy styles. I've just gotten a pair of earmuffs. It allows me to be on this kind of like winter brat stole fun fashion trend and maybe not buying something like those fluffy hats which wouldn't be as much my style. Even hairstyles, hairstyles transform an outfit so much. I love wearing those little low Y2K spiky buns and it just feels so different to when I've just got my hair down like this when I haven't done anything to it and I've barely brushed it, you know? Now you may be thinking, Bibi, yeah, these tips are all great, but how do I have the confidence to wear what I actually want to wear? And let me tell you this, there is no easy way to just stop caring about what others think. If I knew, I would be doing it. I wish I could sit here and tell you, yeah, I don't care what people think, I do what I want. But that's not the reality. But I think it's one of those things that starts from within. If you're not confident in yourself and your style, it's not going to translate to other people because you cannot rely on the validation or non-validation of others to to live your life. That's not that's not what we're doing here. We're not going to rely on the thoughts of other people. You probably don't even want to associate with if they're judging people for their style. Like you don't want to associate with those people anyway. So what's the point in trying to impress them when realistically they're not people really worth your time and your worry? It comes from just being comfortable in yourself and what you're wearing. And if you like the outfit, wear it a hundred times. Don't worry about if people notice your outfit repeating because first of all, clothes are meant to be worn that's like literally the whole point of clothes it's in the definition so i don't get what this whole i can't wear this outfit more than once mentality is because like Clothes are meant to be worn. The culture of consumerism right now tells us that clothes are disposable when they're not. You can tell I get very passionate about this. And I think curating your own wardrobe helps build this confidence because you're not wearing the cookie cutter mold of what you're supposed to be wearing because it's trendy. Even if you do have these few trendy pieces, you're wearing the clothes for you. You're not wearing clothes for other people. So it leads to a lot less comparison. So I think confidence in what you're wearing comes with building a wardrobe and creating these pieces that you love because you'll love this item so much you won't give a crap what anyone else thinks about it. You know people say that like if you grow your own food at home it tastes better. It's like that but for clothing except 
don't eat clothing because it probably doesn't have a lot of like nutritional value. <laughs> the lighting is just nuts. Who knows what's going on with the weather at the moment? I really hope this video was useful in giving you a few tips on learning how to build your style. Just remember though, style isn't fixed. Style is fluid. You don't have to stick to one style for the rest of your life. You will grow and adapt and change. We're human. It's kind of what we do. But what I'm talking about here is buying a whole new wardrobe every season of stuff that you really don't like and you don't value and that you'll chuck away at the end of the season it's adding pieces with value that you'll see yourself wearing over and over again is all down to more mindful consumerism and actually re-wearing and loving and cherishing our clothes and i really think that getting into shopping secondhand and thrifting helps to add more value to clothes because you spend a lot more time looking for them i'm still very much on my journey of personal style and confidence i'm not there yet don't know if i'll ever be there as i said because style just changes and grows but i'm so much more educated i just thought i'd share it with you guys i know i have waffled on for long enough my throat is getting kind of sore so so i think this is probably a good point to end the video i hope you found some of these tips useful and if you guys have any more tips for each other leave them in the comments below remember to keep it nice and respectful although i trust you guys completely don't forget to check out the link in my description to download karma and start building upon your style let me know if you like this video and if you want to see more styling videos in the future and with that don't forget to like comment and subscribe you YouTube things, YouTube things, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!